Hi everyone, <coughs> Julie here and welcome to well, it's September's sewing chat. Before I get on to the sewing, which is a bit of the underwater quilt, I'm going to touch on a few things that people have asked about. First is, I don't know if you can see over there, I've got some like dress forms. They're actually pin cushions or a like a one third scale female bust there and a pin cushion, the red one's actually a pin cushion and the machine there is an overlocker which actually ties in with the dress forms and the reason for that, the reason they are significant for me is that many years ago, like 1988, I was living in London and the man who shared the, or one of the men that shared the flat I rent, room in a flat I rented, was the manager of a company that sold tailor's dummies. Ends up, they wanted to start making their own rather than import them from France, and we worked out how to do them. These were made the traditional way out of paper mache and plaster, and the significance of paper mache is that you can put pins into them, whereas fiberglass tailor's dummies, you can't. So traditional tailor's dummies were either paper or paper mache or a combination of that with plaster or whatever. Very messy process, but very fulfilling. Um, and the company had been around for like 100 years. I ended up having my own company doing them and that was interesting to say the least but um that's where my affinity with taylor's dummies comes from and also with an overlocker because the cheap ones were just covered in jersey which you basically cut out a shape like a t-shirt without sleeves and just overlocked up the side and across the shoulders and then you just glued it down with actually carpet latex you know, around the neck and the, the bottom. So that's where that significance comes from. Both it's how I know how to use an overlocker and what dress forms, you know, the, the traditional type of ones. So that was something somebody asked about, you know, was what was the machine and what were the dress forms. And that's what it's from because that's what I used to do. So I don't really have a use for the overlocker. I made a coaster which I haven't got close at hand out of it out of made a tiny house and turned it into a coaster just overlocked the put a backing fabric and just overlocked the four sides and much simpler than binding it or anything else the other thing that I mentioned in a video and said I would show in this video is dollhouse quilts now I haven't done much to do with dollhouse stuff recently. I've had a few goes at a few things that were I need a lot more practice at. But what I had was little quilts like that. That would probably go on a single bed. And that one that would go on a double bed, queen size bed or whatever that you made would make for a dollhouse. Now I've got a bit of foam here. It's not thick enough for a mat. Well, it would be thick enough for a thin mattress in a dollhouse. I've got other foam that's half as wide, and I'd probably put that together with this to give a better, um, yeah, uh, a thicker mattress. But just that's just to show that this being a queen size quilt, if you had pillows, this actually covers that foam. So if you had your pillows separate, it's not quite big enough to go over pillows, I don't think. Not and then hang down the sides of the bed. But it's definitely, you know, if you just wanted to show it on a dollhouse mattress or if you wanted to have it folded over and then you could bring it further down the bed. And if you weren't going to be changing your bedding, you would have have um, a sheet, 
you'd have to make the pillows which I've already got the stuff for making them. I've got the fabric and I've got sesame seeds for stuffing them. Um, yeah, sheet, maybe a second sheet folded over and then this would go over the top. If I was going to make more than one bed, I would probably um, make this one hexagon wider again. So it would actually, this would go down past this thickness mattress but not if it was yeah, much thicker than the mattress was thicker. So I'd probably make it probably two hexagons wider so it would drape down over the edge of the bed and one or two hexagons longer so you could have pillows and still have it cover the pillows and come down to the bottom. But that's a 1 12th scale um, bed quilt. Same thing, if you had a single bed, which is like three quarters of this width, same, roughly the same length, so rather than six foot by four foot, you'd have six foot by three foot or whatever it is, then this would probably actually be the perfect size. And that would possibly be a bit small. I mean, it's not, it's actually longer. So that would work when you look at the difference in the sizes. So they're ones that I've made. I've got, that's actually fully quilted and bound with a nice cat fabric on the back that was left over from a quilt I made for my friend. And there's a green one and a pink one that still need to be quilted and bound. I've got a list of things to talk about as per usual. The first one is thank you to everyone for supporting the channel, both with views and shares and financially. I bought myself a new iron which I needed. I'll just see if I can turn the camera around that way. Brand new iron, it's Philips brand. I had a Philips brand one before that I got probably, you now I'm showing my age, 1990. I got it with um, English people who know this. Um, stars from petrol station you know like in america i don't know if you call them green stamps or whatever but i got a phillips iron for free lasted 20 years i threw it out because it was just too dirty it didn't actually stop working i then got another free one here from points from a supermarket not a phillips one but that was 10 years ago and i've been using it right up until this week but it's you know, getting too too dirty and it does stick a bit. So I've wanted a new iron for a long time, so I got a Phillips one. I don't expect things to last like they used to, but if I get 10 years out of it, I'll be happy. If I get 20, I'll be ecstatic. So thank you for the donations that enabled me to buy that. The, this is the sew part of the sew and chat. I'm actually finishing off or sewing in the remainder of the squid that I made and I will do a short on it probably this coming week but for now I'll show you what it looks like before I finish the video I probably don't have enough talking to actually get it all sewn in it's two blocks that I'm adding in the blocks themselves are sewn together so I'll get them done. I actually haven't been in this room since last week's video. So I've had all those bits of fabric and the strips of cardboard and you know the cutter and the everything else just still sitting on the table so I had to just quickly make some space. Um, I've been studying and avoiding studying this week. Um, I had a contract law assignment that's due tonight. I submitted it last night. It really is a piece of rubbish. But I actually don't mind anymore. The reason being is a couple of weeks ago I got very quickly approved for the disability pension. They actually put me down as blind. Which if you can see me sewing this. And that was a different thing I'll come to in a minute. See me sewing this, you wouldn't think I was legally blind. 
I actually have the um, people that do the pension, I have them change the category to just disability and not blind. If you're on the blind pension, and I do have a friend who is on that, um, you're allowed to work, you're not income or asset tested, so you're allowed to work and make as much money as you want and it won't affect your pension. I don't plan on working. I mean, if I end up making a huge amount of money from YouTube, then I'll have to reconsider and get them to put me onto the blind if they'll change it. But um, I'm on the disability pension because the blind pension doesn't doesn't pay you rent assistance, which is stupid because you can be just as blind as not blind and still have to pay rent. But I think if you're on the blind pension, they assume you'll go out and work, which really is a total farce. So I'm just on the disability pension, which gives me more money each fortnight, which has been great because now I can actually afford to have my grass cut. I can afford to have more than a strict 14 days worth of food you know, in my fridge and pantry that if something happened and a payment was a day late, I wouldn't actually be without food for that day. That's how fine I've been cutting it for the past however many years. I do a fortnightly shop and I make sure there's food for the fortnight because that's all I could afford. Yeah, so, you know, none of this, you know, down to the last drops of milk and having run out of bread days before the fortnight runs out. I've actually got, you know, a few days in reserve, which is a really, really nice feeling. I managed to get my rent up to date because they paid arrears back to when I applied for the pension, so I got the rent up to date. I was thinking of buying a new vacuum cleaner because the one I've got, it's a commercial one, it's a backpack one. And I thought at the end of the day, it works. I don't need to waste money you know, on Afterpay or Zippay on a, on a new vacuum cleaner. But I did indulge and get, and get the new iron. But then that was from donations paid for that. It wasn't from my pension. Which leads me to studying. I started studying as an alternative for having to look for work. It was to get unemployment benefit, even on a reduced capacity like I was because of my back, is you have to look for X number of jobs a fortnight. You know, forget the fact that there are no jobs. you still got to apply. But if you're a full-time student, or in my case I could have got away with just being a part-time student, then that's a acceptable alternative and so I started studying that was two years ago must have been two or over two years ago so now that I'm on the pension I don't actually need to study you know I can I'll keep going right this minute because I'm still waiting on results for things Plus, I've got some textbooks coming for next semester, which starts in October. And, you know, just putting them straight back on eBay to sell is not really an option because I can't get to the post office easily. So I will stick it out. I did my contract law assignment. Like I said, sent that in last night. I've still got another assignment to do and waiting on the results for an assignment. But regardless of even if I fail everything this semester, I will stick it out for next semester. That's the plan. And then I will stop after that because if I don't pass contracts, I can't do any more of the compulsory subjects without that as a prerequisite. So, and I'm not doing it for a fourth time. So we'll just see how it goes for this year. I mean, up until... Um, into January for the exam period for the um, next um, trimester. If I pass contracts and part, well, if I pass everything, which I don't think I will because I just haven't put the effort in, I will reconsider on a term by term basis. But I think my attempt at the contract assignment that I submitted last night is pretty woeful. So, um, 
I'm not holding up much hope and I, like I said, it, it's not the be all and end all now that I'm on the disability pension and in some ways I'm better off not studying because I don't need them having to come along and question how can a blind person study, but we'll see how it goes. I've also, I didn't realise it, that I can apply to what's called the National Disability Insurance Scheme to have services put in place and um, you know, that's to go to certain services or have them come here. I didn't realise that you could do that without being on the disability pension. So I've got started the application process, which I did over the phone with them. And they've sent me the form that I have to have the doctor fill out saying, you know, what I need and why. So if I can have them pay to have my grass cut, then that's a benefit. They can pay for podiatry so I don't have to impose on my friend to do my toenails. But I rang up a couple of local podiatrists, not, not beauty salons that do pedicures, but podiatrists. And the initial cut your toenails is $120. Now, I refuse to pay that on principle, let alone the fact that I can't afford it. When I was at the Senior Citizens, we used to have a woman come every eight weeks to cut, you know, anyone that had booked in to cut their toenails, and that was less than $20. I can live with that. I cannot live with 120 for the first time and then 90 each time after that. That's just highway robbery. So... If I get podiatrist on the NDIS, then basically that pays for it. I don't have to, I'm not going to be out of pocket, but we'll just see. I'll also have the doctor fill in a repeat part of my form for social housing that says I need gas, no gas appliances. And we're going to base that on the fact that I can't see the flames, which I don't know that I could, but... We shall see. So while he's filling in the insurance scheme paperwork, I'll just get him to do that one bit and sign for the housing. I mean, it could take years on the housing list and apparently all new social housing built in this state from next year are not going to have gas at all. They're phasing out gas as part of the, you know, the global emissions reductions or whatever. So, and an existing housing that has gas, it will be converted to all electric on a, over a certain time period. So, I'm not overly worried about that aspect. They'll probably all be electric by the time I get a place, but we'll just see what happens. There's no harm. They said that they want a doctor from, a letter from the doctor and a letter from the optometrist and this form refilled in. I'm not having the doctor fill in the entire form. He can just do the one page that's necessary and sign it all and I can scan them and send them off and leave it with them. Um, I've only got a couple more things on my list. I'll just stop this and then restart it because otherwise it'll turn off in the middle of a sentence, I think. So I haven't done much quilt work well since last week I've done none like I said I've been studying and avoiding studying which means I've been reading like on the computer don't ask me to read a book but um, my diamond quilt that I think in the next video I don't know when the next video is going to be next week week after um, I will show what I've done sewn together and I will get another diamond done so you can see all the five different options and that quilt I'm going to give to my friend I'm going to make it into a it'll be a doona cover so I'll just make it like you would a pillow get some I've got some press studs already to sew in and I will buy a new doona or duvet if you call them that um, to go in it and give it to my friend probably for her birthday next year which is October so that gives me a year to get it done right this minute I'm doing a bit of the underwater quilt as you can see by the colors of it what this is is 
the squid and I, I I'll do a short on this but I'll show you you know once I've done it so there's that my hip the doctor did a letter that was sent through to the surgeon saying you know how bad my hip had got and could the category be raised or low whatever from category three which is a year to 18 months to category two which is supposed to be three months i spoke to the woman at the surgeon's office and she said she'd make sure that he saw the letter he did say when i saw him back in may that if it got bad to let him know and he changed the category so i'm still waiting on that and yes it is getting bad i've um i can still walk out to the letterbox and things like that but we went to breakfast on friday and then went to kmart which is in australia people not well we got kmart everywhere um and i got a few bits and pieces and that afternoon I literally couldn't move because I'd done too much. It's not so bad that I have to take the crutches with me when I go outside, but it um, is probably not far off it. I've ordered new stoppers for the bottom of my crutches because the well, they're cheaper than buying new crutches, but the old ones were um, basically the rubber was peeling off, so I've got new ones for them coming and they'll arrive well before I actually need to use the crutches. I mean, I wanted new ones and I realised I don't actually need new ones. I just need new stoppers. So I've done that. Um, don't know what else to tell you about this this month. I've, um, like I said this, I've got dug out the underwater quilt to do this squid and once this squid is sewn in, and I've taken out the little hexagons of it, it will go back in, a, in the tub, and it will sit there until the diamond quilt is done, which is not going to be any time soon. I've still been doing a bit of knitting. I've got two more little squares. Well, they're not squares. They're just two lots of 40 rows to add to the strip I'm currently doing and that will be another strip done that will give me two that I need to sew in which I might do might do tomorrow but it just means clearing off all the mess that's on this um, I've just got to clear off all the mess I've got absolutely everywhere that's out the window still got the sheets of cardboard the blankets under that I've got all my tubs with um, covered hexagons I've got all those strips that I cut up for last week's video that are still sitting there so I need to tomorrow's going to be a nice warm day it's going to be like 22 degrees or something Celsius um, which is the warmest day yet this um, well, since last summer so I'll probably you know it's warm enough to be in this room doing things so I shall tidy up what I've got. I might cut that cardboard. I might not, but just have a bit of a bit of a general tidy up. I'll get some more hexagons covered this coming week. Listening to lectures and such. Right now, I've got one assignment to do on ancient Rome. I passed my assignment on. Nosos in Greek in Bronze Age Greece and the next one I'll be doing you know there's a choice of five cities and I'm going to do mine on Rome which is somewhere I've been so I will get that assignment done it's not due till the beginning of October because this that subject doesn't have a exam you've got a quiz which I didn't do brilliantly out. I got three out of five. The assignment, the assignment I just did, I got 60%. So if I can pass it, I'll be happy. If I don't, as I said before, it's not the end of the world. Contract 
it's all done by the exam which is 27th or something of September so another you know, three weeks just over three weeks so the assignment that was due today we should get the results back for that you know literally days before the exam and the other subject which is alternative dispute resolution and this is what's annoying I don't know if you can see that but the tacking stitches have come undone around the hexagon so I might I can just sew it up I mean I, I could use the glue stick thing and sew the fabric back down but I'll just try and hold it a bit tighter and sew it through so the alternative dispute resolution the results for that assignment should be out by tomorrow if not it's a pretty woeful um, performance by the university because the university you, the, the unit coordinators are not allowed to release the results until everyone even with extensions has submitted their assignment so there, there could be no chance of, of cheating and such and the university policy which someone was telling me this morning in a meeting was is that no extensions will be given for longer than tw um, 21 days because the results are supposed to be got out to the students in within 21 days but apparently there's been people with like five week extensions which means that our results haven't been released which is unfair on us and actually goes against the university policy so the student that had found out looked up all this is actually going to email the university and say you know why do you have a policy that's not actually being enforced and it's unfair to the other students who got their assignments in on time which is now four weeks ago even though it's supposed to be a three-week turnaround so it'll be interesting to see if the results come out the actual unit coordinator said we might get the results but not the comments released after this weekend so it's, you can't go and say well this is what I did wrong to somebody who's still got an extension all you can tell them is what your marks were and if you ended up with 90% then you're going to know that you there's going to be very few comments for that one anyhow but we'll just see so I've got that results to come and the exam for that I think might be the I don't know last weekend in September anyhow it's before the contract exam so there's that exam it's been an interesting subject I've actually enjoyed it alternative dispute resolution which is mediation arbitration conciliation negotiation um, and the different different criteria for each and when they can be used and not used and things like that but the coordinator does not there's two textbooks one I've got the other one I've downloaded part of the um, he doesn't do lecture slides so what he talks about in the lecture is you, you know he talks slowly but you're expected to actually write down everything or you can get a transcript but it's then never never totally accurate so a lot of writing involved which isn't good for me with my side I can sit there and listen to the lectures and look at the slides because I just made a mistake there um, because I can see things on the computer what I can't easily do is read a book and when you're talking doing law that's if you can't read your law books you're basically behind the eight ball anyhow but um, yeah it's been it's very interesting it's easy to follow some of it's a bit too simplistic but 
I'll probably eat my words when I get the results back from the assignment and find that I failed it, but I don't think I failed it. I might have only just scraped through. And as I've said a few times already in this video, I'm not really that bothered. You know, the whole purpose of studying, I don't want to be a lawyer. Mediation, being a mediator would be an interesting career, except you're dealing with people in conflict, you know, with un unresolved issues. And I do contra um, conflict not at all. You know, I run a mile in the opposite direction to an argument or even a heated discussion. So... You know, I'm not going to be a mediator, I'm not going to be a lawyer. You know, I'm just doing it primarily out of interest. And, you know, these past few weeks I've been more interested in reading and, you know, doing other bits and pieces than, um, than I have in studying, which isn't the best mindset to be in when you're studying something as hard as law. But it's all been, it's all interesting. So what I'm going to do, rather than absolutely bore you to tears, is I'm going to stop dribbling and I'm just going to, I'm not going to get the last little bit of this sewn in. I'm still got this much to sew, but what I will let you do is, how does it go, try and get the rest of it out the way. See if I can turn it over. This, um, this quilt has somewhere. I thought I did it. I've got a funny feeling it's sitting separate. Is it is too? I did an octopus, which goes in rows three and four. And I think I've shown that on a video, but just um, I thought it was I thought I'd sewn it in, but I haven't. So I'm just going to hobble over to the tub that I have this quilt in and just have a look. And there it is. I hadn't realised I hadn't sewn it in. But I'll just um, get back on my chair. Is this is the bottom of the quilt, and not having a look at that's the border. Let's see if I can get that. That's the border. Block one, block two, block three, and I think this goes blocks. Two and three. Ah, it's got to go above the sand. So it's rows four and five, I think it is. And that's the octopus. Now, so he goes above these bits. I've still got to get the sand or come through in the next lot. As you can see, the sand is tapering off. The sand will come up. If I end up doing a third underwater quilt, the sand will be at least the bottom of the next quilt, like at least one row of sand. If not, this one here is probably, you would say there was two, because you can't see that there. Um, there'd probably be two squares of sand there, and it can be like a seabed in the third quilt, if I ever get to the third quilt. Now, there's Mr. Octopus with his eight legs. And from what I think I read, their legs are not tentacles. So that's octopus. Carry along the quilt to the other end where I've got, and I've shown you this before, so just for those that haven't seen it, that's part of the shipwreck, the underwater shipwreck with a big hole in it. And there will be masts and that's the back of the ship because the front tapers up at an angle. So I haven't done that yet. 
so what I've done here that you can see at the far end so I've actually got more of this end of the quilt done that's the edge the outer edge if I can even get it in the photo in the frame is um, that's the corner fish fish seahorse all the usual turtle fish no that fish 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 turtle fishes seahorse there's a seahorse that you can just see and then up here we have a squid so the difference with this is you've got your eight legs which are all a little bit uniform I mean they probably aren't I couldn't be bothered this is four blocks I couldn't be bothered spreading it out into six or would actually be some legs coming down this way and some that way so it would actually be like he'd cover eight blocks so I've just kept him in the middle and that's a bit that I'm sewing in now is as well as the eight legs he's got two tentacles and I don't actually know what squids use the temp tentacles for but I'll do a short video you know the YouTube short you know under a minute I'll do a short when I've got this one sewn in and you'll be able to see it a bit clearer that way because it's not that clear here he's a funny shape his head's higher than the octopus and not as round the octopus head was a lot rounder you know, if I put the octopus next to him so that's the squid and that's the octopus so they're not worlds apart but his head's a lot rounder and his eyes are I was going to say further apart but I don't think they are they're the same distance but his legs actually come out the octopus legs come out further but I didn't want to do that with the squid because I needed to get the tentacles to come up I didn't want the tentacles coming out to the side because once again then we're talking another you know four blocks just wanted to get this one done based on like a like a clip art picture of octopus and a, and a squid octopus I, I knew how to do anyhow because I'd done one in the first quilt but this one was um a total new character for me same as the sharks were unique on this one and the dolphins I'm not having sharks or dolphins on this one because I've got the ships they're going to take up a fair chunk of it plus this quilt's two blocks shorter and I think two two blocks narrower than the first underwater quilt but that is basically it for the month once again thank you very much for the support from everybody don't forget to like and share and subscribe my subscriptions are going up nicely money's staying exactly the same so I don't know I don't know what the story is with that but it's ticking over you know roughly a hundred dollars every two months it does make a difference it um you know, any money makes a difference when you're unemployed but um you know it is appreciated and the support through Kofi and PayPal yeah I can't even begin to say how much difference that you know just that extra few dollars that you can afford has made you know to I would say basically to the quality of my life it's actually made a difference so I do appreciate it I'll be back either probably next week maybe not but to show the progress on the diamond quilt which isn't much because I haven't touched it in in weeks but I'll get this chappy sewn in and put this aside and 
get well stuck into the um, the diamond quilt. And thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.